Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Krishnan Dure, teaching in the Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture, University of Calcutta, Calcutta. Today, we are concerned with economic history of India from earliest time to 1707. The module that we are concerned here with today is economy under the Shatavahans. Now, the main objectives of this module that I am trying to make you understand e are introducing the learner by highlighting the Shatavahana kings of the Deccan because in every case in um, early India whenever we try to understand any economic activity it was managed or operated by it was conducted by those people under certain political dynasty, certain ages. So, political scenario has to be taken into account in order to understand economic activities because under their protection some economic activities were performed. So, first of all we have to get a scenario of the Deccan in which uh, where the Shatavahanus ruled. Another part is the development of agriculture industry, trade and commerce and coinage. When agricultural production becomes surplus, it comes to the channels through the channels of trade and commerce to others. So, when trade and commerce develops, in order to facilitate those activities, coins are required. Coins are nothing but uh, metallic pieces or certain pieces which guarantee the movement of goods and other exchanges. So, we have taken into account coins also a part of economic activities under the Shatavahanus. Now, first part political scenario. What we get? Early India witnessed the emergence of a number of political powers after the end of the Mauryan rule. Mauryan rules we all know that 325 to 185 BC Mauryans ruled almost the whole of India except a few areas in the far south. So, this was an umbrella like empire after their extinct when they passed away from the political horizon of early India what happened? This is the period in which we find the Shatavanas. So, at the same time we also should remember that this is the time when certain political powers came from outside and they entered into the political horizon of early India. What those powers were? Bactrian Geeks, Shakos, Kushanus, Shungos, Kannus. Shungos, Kannus not came from outside. Kushanus came from outside. Bactrian Geeks, they came from outside, but there were other powers which were indigenous within India. Those are Cholos, Pandos, Cheros in the south and Shungos, Kannos in the central India and eastern India including area. Now, this was the situation, political situation in which we find the Shatavahanus to have ruled in the Deccan. The Deccan witnessed the emergence of the Shatavahanus 1st century BCE to 225 CE who might have become politically powerful as a particular branch if acknowledged of the Andhra Vrityas of in the Deccan. Students in this connection we should remember that Shatavahanas who they were, their identities, these are controversial. Maybe they came from Andhra, maybe came from outside a, uh, another part of the country, whatever that they were Shatavahanas and they ruled the Deccan this we should take as it is for the understanding of this topic today. So, let us go to the next part agriculture another occasion in which we try to make you understand that economic activities or economy for its understanding we have to take into account three major things production, consumption and transportation. Now, production related to 
both agricultural as well as, as, well as non-agricultural. Agricultural production, therefore, we should also take note of this agricultural part, production part in this case also, that is under the Shatabhanus. So, we have taken into account agriculture. What we get? Plough cultivation was known. The epigraphic records of the Shatabhanus refer to the term hollow. Hollow is a word that signifies both land measurement as well as the plough. Essentially, it is related to the land in which cultivation, task of cultivation was carried on. What produced? Wheat, barley, etc. The point of irrigation, one thing it should be mind, it should be kept in mind that agricultural operation becomes successful if it is facilitated by supplying profuse of water and this may come either by natural way or by way of irrigation. Now, when irrigation is concerned, what kind of information do we get from the records of the Shatabhanas? We get irrigation, we like to propose reference to the word Rahatto Ghariya Jantra, that is Prakit text Gaha Sattasai, that was written by Shatabhanu King Halo. This is Sanskrit rendering, this Sanskrit rendering of the text is Gatha Sattasuti, in which we find the word Raha. Ghadiyo, Rahatta Ghadiyo, that is Arahatta, wheels with pots, so that it could be used to lift water from wells. And water from wells, when lifted, it was distributed to the land to facilitate the task of cultivation. So, this is how irrigation is reported in the literary text of the Gatha Shatashati. Now, after this, what we get? The use of water lifting wheels with pots was known, that is just now I have told you. We have an epigraphic reference to Orojantriko Srenna. This is an absolutely important term. We also learn that Orojantro, that is Udojantro or Udojantro, and thus we come to the meaning workers fabricating high. Hydraulic engines for the word Odojantrika Senna, that is the people who were, who formed a group and concerned with the use of this water lifting device. Agriculture, crops included wheat, rice, gram, pea, sorghum, barley, lentils, etc. They were the first to issue land grants to institutions. Now, Leaving aside the uh, point of agriculture, let us come to industry. What is this? This is also a production, part of production as I told you. This is non-agricultural production. What we get about this? We get Shatavahan's period gave the impression towards the development of several industries, pottery, carpentry, textiles, mining, metallurgy, pottery, pieces of potteries with ornamental design. Now, why ornamental design? Potteries may be useful in day to day life, but there are aware people, perhaps there are aware people who chose certain designed potteries as we like today, certain design things, design sharis, design other things, they also chose designed potteries. So, according to the, according to, according to the needs of the people of the day, such and such design potteries were also produced and there were people who mastered this craft. Those people are no more today, but the, the things they had used are left to it. And these are the things on the basis of which we are trying to build up our ideas about the economic activities of those times, those days. That is why we get ornamental designs, designed potteries. Again, artistic shapes, it is also not for all. 
shapes, artistic shapes, design potteries, fine polished potteries, all these things, all these potteries were used, certainly not by all people. There were some people who used these. As today also, we, there are some people who are very, very sophisticated, of sophisticated taste. They use certain very costly things, designed things, etc., etc. These are the things that we know from certain excavated areas, Kondapur, Maski, Amravati, Poitan, carpentry, sculptural representations of thrones, chairs, bedsteads, cars, carts, household articles and containers. Let us come to mining and metallurgy. Gold was mined at Maski and Wonderwoolly. Traces of mining and casting iron are found at several places of Telangana. Bronze, brass vessels, ornamental lamps, again ornamental lamps. This is also an important point. Lamps may be useful, may be used, but ornamental lamps not for all, but for some. That is, some must skilled people, skilled artisans produce such and such ornamental lamps. Figurines discovered at Brahmapuri, Poitan and Amravati. Again I tell you, the archaeological artifacts that we get from these sites, maybe metal, maybe non-metal, maybe art then, whatever. What archaeological goods, artifacts we get on the basis of these, we try to build up the patterns of activities, particularly economic activities when they performed. And at the same time, we also get some indications towards the stratification of the society. Society means the people, stratification among the people. Some were skilled, some were more skilled in producing certain other things. This is how the economic activities were conducted by them in those days. Let us another thing, textiles. Ptolemy again, a non-indigenous non author, text, textile sources, geography, uh, uh, Ptolemy's geography. There he pays attention to testimony to the textile industry. This is a clear testimony of te te textile industry of the Mysolia region. Orthoshastra stated the textiles of Kalingo and Mahisho are very famous guilds. Each of these crafts organized into a shreni that is guild, they are regulated, they, they regulated the activities of its members and looked after the welfare. These economic institutions were in charge of production and distribution of commodities. Students, in this connection, we should remember one thing that the occupational groups who mustered in some non-agricultural products, they formed a particular group that is Sreni. And those who were associated with the production of such and such goods, for example, carpenters or stones or gold, etc., they, those members were taken into this Sreni. And thus, this Sreni, this organization looked after those the welfare of the members, not only that, but also the produced goods, their distribution also was looked after by the Shongo. Trade and commerce, its occasion. Now, let us see what information do we get. Different categories of merchants, such as Monik, Sethi, Shattabaho, Vasniko, that is, itinerant merchant caravan leader who under his care took good number of caravans with many articles of trade from one place to another. That leader was described as Shattvaho. Vonik, 
Vonik is a blanket term. It encapsulates not only the peddler or a hawker, but also a big merchant, Sethi, a financier, a big merchant. All those were particularly associated with business activities, trading activities, particularly in general economic activities. But certain layers are coming to the surface. Financiers, some were leaders, some took leading part, transporting goods from one place to another, some were itinerant merchant, traveling merchant from one place to another, carrying different goods of useful, useful goods. What then? Terms like vanij, sethi, sattvaho are also found in inscriptions. Even, for example, in this connection, we should take note of the term inscription. What is inscription? Inscription is also a record. Inscribed, that has been inscribed on stone, maybe on copper plate. This is called inscription. This is also a record. Record of the experience of the people of the particular time in which it was written. This is also an important source of our information regarding the economic activities of the people of the Shatabhavanu time. So, inscriptions have also been taken into account and that is why we have mentioned here these terms Monij, Sethi and Sattabhaho, all these are figuring in the inscriptions also. The caravan merchant Shatabhaho transported either his own goods or those of other goods, traders. The Sethi possessed huge amount of wealth according to the Jatakos. Jatakos also an important source of information, 2nd century BC to 2nd century AD. Its date is very, very uh, subject to question, but about this time, these stories, Buddha's birth stories, but in these stories, there are many information which are, which may be utilized for understanding economic activities of this period. Next, what we get? Our attention has been drawn to the commerce. The Navodhano, this is important thing. Pancho Navodhano, this is another important thing. This is very, very significant in, the, in view of the fact that it means wealth due to having two boats. That is, the people who collected, who earned their wealth by using boats, who used five boats and collected wealth, pancha nabodhano. This is absolutely significant terms. Di nabodhano, pancha nabodhano. That is, those who had two boats and those who had five boats, there was a difference. Students, this difference to be noted. So, now the question of the procurement of goods. How these goods, whether traded in or from one place to another, whatever. The goods the traders traded in were purchased or obtained in more than one way. Merchants bought the goods from a ship anchored at a port. On another occasion, we have made you understand that port is an important gateway to overseas trade. Port is also an important place where economic activities, particularly unloading and loading activities, merchandise activities are performed. So, port is a place from where many things can be, could be bought. Similarly, they also bought it. Another way to procure goods was by mutual agreement with another. That is, if one person could not buy all goods or the sufficient goods, he could buy it with the help of others. So, that is how mutual agreement was reached and articles of trade were brought, bought. And the third way was to procure goods, was approaching the producer directly. Even today also this is happening. In India, there are many places where we get the financier or big business 
people go there and contact with direct producer directly in order to collect all the produced goods. This is how these goods also procured. So, as I, as I told you just a few seconds, a few minutes ago, bonic in connection with the term bonic, it may be the hawker or peddler to business magnet. So, let us see what about hawker. HP Ray draws our attention to the hawker also during the period under discussion. Hawker who was hawking with different, even today also, different useful things. We also have a reference from the Jataka to the hawker who might have handled goods like pots, etc., for the use of the commoners. Even today, we see this. Export. In connection with export trade, we learn from HPD that export items like silk, iron, food, even today also we find these items to have been exported to different countries, were sent to the Persian Gulf, Southern Arabia and Cape Guadalupe, and some goods like luxury ones were sent to Alexandria and then to the Roman market. So, this is how we get export trade. And in connection with the foreign trade, our attention has also been drawn to the three main ports. Again, we come to the question of ports. There are many ports, but these ports are very, very important. Even today also, we get many important ports, both on the west coast and on the east coast. Similarly, in the past, these three ports were very, very important. Barbaricum in the Indus Delta, Kalyan near Mumbai and Bharugacho that is Southern Gujarat Broch. These were the major ports on the west coast. What imports they made from other countries? The import items inclu included gold and silver coins, vessels of silver, Roman bottle made of glass and terracotta, lamps from the site of Ter that is Tagoranagaru of the Deccan, a wine jug, a candlestick, base, a mirror case, Roman metal objects of bronze, copper, etc. from the Brahmapuri site. That is, they also, these goods were imported from different countries. Now, as I told you earlier, that in order to facilitate trading exchanges, we exchange coins, we use coins, coins metallic in different denominations, big or small denominations. Small denominations, when you use small denomination coins, we promote small scale exchanges. Similarly, Shatavanus, during the days of the Shatavanus also, we find the use of coins. We have Roman coins from the districts of Kuddapa, Guntur, Krishna region, a hoard of 8 silver punch mark coins and 39 Roman coins have also been found from the Karimnagar district. Remember one thing, Roman coins we are getting. Why? Because Romans, they imported goods from here. In, in exchange, they paid the prices of those goods in their coins and that is why we get Roman coins. So, coins were used in order to facilitate trading exchanges. This is how we learn about coinages, what we get. We know that the Chathapanu's ruler Gautami Putra Shatakorni restruck the Khatrapu silver coins and then circulated the coins. That is, these coins have been found from Jogal Thimbi. That is, Gautami Putra is well known to have defeated Khatrapu ruler Nohapano. And the coins they had used were restruck by 
Gautami Putra Shatakoni in order to facilitate the trading exchanges during the time of Gautami Putra Shatakoni. In other words, Gautami Putra Shatakoni reused those coins with his symbols, his authentication, so that the people of those days, particularly of his reign period, could use those coins in their day to day exchanges. So, this is supported by the coin hoard from Jugal Thembi in Nasik in Maharashtra. Our attention has been drawn to a good number of copper cast coins from Nivasa and Vokardhan. We learned these coins were of the Shatavahanus. That is, during the days of the Shatavahanus, these coins were of use. Now, what metals they were using in producing their coins, lead, copper and protein. Protein is an alloy of uh, tin, zinc, copper and lead. The Shatabhanu coins mostly bear the elephant symbol on the obverse, the team motif, tree motif and Ujjain symbols are also found on the reverse coin, reverse and accordingly they are a two group of coins. Today also we bear, we, we, uh, we see our coins also bearing certain symbols, Ashokan symbol and other symbols, parliament symbols. These are nothing but the proof of official, official guarantee. Officially these symbols are bearing the guarantee of the king. Even today also we find the authority, the government to promise this note or coins for its use in day to day exchanges. Similarly, during the days of the Shatabhanus also the authority provided authentication for its use in day to day exchanges and that is why these were their symbols, tree symbol, Ujjain symbol with railing, tree with railing and elephant symbol. These were the symbols of the Shatabhanu coins. Now, we have lion type Shatabhanu coins, again a symbol of authentication, official authentication coins from Gujarat and Maharashtra, the Krishna and Godavari districts. In different areas, Shatabhanu used coins with different symbols, so that they could facilitate the economic exchanges. Now, what we get during the Shatavano period? In a nutshell, in summary, we can tell you that agricultural production, non-agricultural production were supervised mainly by the private enterprises. Now, we have come to the end of this lecture today. What we get regarding the economic activities during the of the of the people during the days of the Shatabhanus. Actually, the major point that we get is the entry of individual private enterprise. There was scope for individuals to enter into economic activities either in agricultural production or in industrial production. Even in trade and ex commerce also we get information regarding people who were engaged in moving in conducting trade and commerce. Profuse scope for individuals to be engaged in economic activities not like the state control as we find in the case of the Mauryans just before their time. This is number one. Number two is this. There was scope and there was difference in points of skills in producing artisanal or other products. So, that way society 
witnessed certain differences certain stratification among the people some were skilled some were more skilled this is how the society witnessed different categories of people with different degrees of skills agricultural non agricultural or others this is how we get the impression about the changes in the economic activities that we get during the days of the shatavahanas thank you